I am pleased to welcome all of you to the Subcommittee on Healthy Families and Communities joint hearing with the Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security, chaired by my colleague, Representative Bobby Scott from Virginia. We appreciate his subcommittee's participation today and his personal desire to demonstrate the importance of the Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention Act, or JJ. I would also like to thank my ranking uh, member, Mr. Platts, my colleague on the Healthy Family Subcommittee, and ranking member Forbes for their interest and support in hearing. Finally, I want to recognize uh, Chief Joseph Wing from the Hempstead Police Department in my district. Uh, we met yesterday with uh, Detective Thomas uh, Doran uh, talking about the projects that we have in uh, my district on helping uh, juveniles. I met with uh, Chief Wing uh, and uh, also we talked about Project Sea Fire, Project Impact, and the Nurse and Family Partnership. Uh, some effective juvenile programs they are working with with our DA in Nassau County. So I, I want to thank you both for uh, being here this afternoon and uh, thank you for coming down to see me. Today's hearing serves as an overview of the legislation and will also offer perspectives for the Subcommittee on Healthy Families and Communities to consider uh, as we move through the reauthorization process. Although this is our first hearing on this topic in the Washington, last month our subcommittee held a hearing on gang prevention in my district uh, with ranking member Platts and Ms. Clark in attendance. We heard about the challenges faced by law enforcement, the courts, and local communities in dealing with the juvenile justice system. Ideally, we'd like to prevent youth from entering the juvenile justice system, but we must also look at how to serve those young people already in the system and develop ways to help them get involved in their communities after they have served their time. JJ began with a focus on prevention and rehabilitation and has shifted its focus towards accountability and uh, sentencing. Unfortunately, uh, many of us think that's just not working. During a trip to Northern Ireland uh, in May, I had the privilege of uh, meeting a, a number of young people uh, that they have the same uh, rates of crime uh, as we do here. But their system over there, uh, President with myself, uh, showed me a play that they wrote. And it happened to be about two young women, young girls. They were both about 14 at the time. And it went through where uh, they got into a little bit of trouble. One judge uh, took one young lady and said, you know, this is your first offense, and we think that, you know, we want to work with you. And, you know, she didn't go to prison. The other young woman, unfortunately, got another judge and he put her into prison. Their paths se certainly separated, but their lives changed dramatically. The young woman that did not go to prison uh, was uh, doing community service, got involved in the right uh, agencies, and went on, finished uh, high school, went on to college, and certainly had a productive life. The other young woman, every time she came out of prison, ended up doing criminal acts, and in the end, unfortunately, ended up uh, killing someone and ended up going to prison for the rest of their life. What the play showed and what we know in life, depending on how we handle our young people, that is going to be how their lives are going to go. And I think that's important for us to remember as we go through all the testimony that we're going to be hearing. Sorry, I ad-libbed on that one. <laughs> Young people who don't feel connected to society will look to other sources, such as gangs for acceptance, stability, com uh, companionship, and a sense of identity. For these at-risk children and teenagers, we must invest in their education and their personal development. Communities must come together to address these challenges. Leaders in government, law enforcement, education, business, and communities must work with kids, parents, and citizens to address the needs of our young people so they do not enter into the juvenile justice system. Far, many, far, far too many young prevent, uh, youth prevention efforts have fallen short, and our goal is to reverse that trend. The overview today will be to educate members on JJ and raise questions such as, what is the appropriate federal role in juvenile justice? Is the coordinating council effective? Do we need to update the core mandates? What is research telling us about effective programs and interventions? What does research into early childhood development tell us? We will hear testimony today that will help the subcommittee answer these questions as we move to reauthorize this important legislation.